In ancient times, teachers and philosophers believed in certain principles that guided them in teaching. Those principles are still followed. Those principles are respecting tradition and authority, focusing on character development and moral values of yourself and your students or apprentice, giving importance toward discipline and self-control, emphasizing on rhetoric and public speaking, combining physical, mental, and spiritual development to create holistic learning, encouraging critical thinking and questioning, and finally fostering a sense of community and shared knowledge. These principles are still taught in philosophy, such as Aristotelian or Platonic thought. Teachers are believed to be service workers who contribute their life towards cultivating young minds. Some of these principles varied across cultures and civilizations, but they share a common goal to nurture well-rounded, knowledgeable, and responsible individuals. Now moving on, Pakistan is a country with many issues, being a third world country. On that matter, what many schools in outer countries take for granted are still out of reach for the schools in Pakistan, resulting in deficiency in learning to full extent. Some of the issues that teachers face because of this area. Limited opportunities for specializations and diversifications in subjects. Inadequate teacher training and development programs resulting in inadequate teachers. Poor school infrastructure and lack of maintenance. Now in this, I can give you an example. How many schools in Karachi do you know have swimming pools or courtyards for their students? Isn't a normal part of every school worldwide? But no, not in Pakistan, and there's insufficient resources for students with special needs. Schools put more emphasis on results and grading than they do in character building. Societal expectations and pressure to focus on rote learning are very highly focused by society and place high value on children's minds, then limited access to technology and digital resources. These challenges can vary depending on factors like location, school type, and socioeconomic context. What is a qualified teacher, you may be wondering? Now let me tell you a qualified teacher typically has a bachelor's degree in education or a related field and has either completed a teacher training program or earned a teaching certification. A teacher should also be interested in her subject and possess the knowledge of that subject on the matter. A good teacher should be good in lesson planning, classroom management, and assessment and should be familiar with curriculum design and implementation. On the other hand, an unqualified teacher may lack formal training or behavior and have limited or no experience in teaching, not have a degree or interest in what they're teaching, struggle with lesson planning, classroom management, and assessment, and not stay updated with the latest developments in their subject area. While an unqualified teacher may still have a passion for teaching, the lack of formal training and expertise can impact their effectiveness in the classroom. Qualified teachers, with their specialized knowledge and skills, are better equipped to provide high-quality education and support their students' success. Keep in mind that these are general distinctions, and individual circumstances may vary. I hope you've learned the important values of a good teacher that are needed from a teacher in this lesson.